Raise your hand if you've ever heard, hey DM, while we're in the tavern, I'd like to gamble. Yeah, I thought so. So today I'll show you five quick and simple dice games you can play at the table whenever your players are looking to lose some coin. These games are meant to take up very little time at the table so as to not distract from the actual D&D session, while still allowing players to have fun gambling in the tavern. Cause nothing says D&D shenanigans like playing a dice game inside your dice game. Number 1. Dice Jack Dice Jack, or Dice Blackjack, is essentially blackjack but with dice. Shocker. To play, each player will need three six-sided dice. Players can either play head-to-head -head or against a dealer NPC. The goal is to get as close to 12 as possible without busting. This is an anti-game, meaning everyone agrees to an amount of coin they're willing to wager each round, and must ante up at the start of a round before playing. To start, each person antes up and rolls two of their dice, then adds up the total, keeping them secret. They can then choose to roll the third die if they'd like, adding that to their total, though the third die is always rolled openly and not kept secret. If the third die puts your total over 12, you lose the round immediately. Then everyone who didn't bust reveals their dice and the highest roll takes the pot. If two or more people tie, then they split the pot evenly. If the players are going up against a dealer NPC run by the DM, then they are instead trying to beat their dice total, not the other players. If they beat the dealer, then they win double what they anteed. If they tie, then they just get their ante back, and if they lose, then the dealer keeps the wagered coin. A dealer must always roll the third die if their current total is 8 or lower, but doesn't roll the third die if their total is 9 or higher. If the dealer busts, then all players who didn't bust win. Number 2. Baker's Dozen this is similar to Dice Jack, and I found it on Reddit, so credit to user I am the Todd. The link to the Reddit post is in the description. In this variant, players are trying to get to 13 instead of 12, hence Baker's Dozen, and can roll as many additional dice as they want. Just like Dice Jack, if they go over the goal number, then they bust and lose their wager. There are some minor differences, such as when rolling your first two dice. You roll one die openly so everyone at the table can see it, then roll the second one secretly. Any additional dice you roll are done openly as well. This method of rolling adds a little bit more strategy to the game, as you have a better idea of what each player has as opposed to only seeing the one additional die in Dice Jack. Also, if they're playing against a dealer, the dealer will always roll an extra die until their total is over 9. This version can take a little bit longer per round, but allows a bit more engagement than with Dice Jack. Number 3. Ships and Fleets This game is played head-to-head -head and requires each player to have 3 dice. The goal is to have the highest scoring hand at the end of 3 rounds. To start, each player antes up some coin, then rolls 3 six-sided dice in secret. They can choose any number of their dice to re-roll for rounds 2 and 3, and at the end of round 3, all players reveal their hands. Hands are scored like this. Each individual number on a die is a ship of that value. When scoring, add up all of your ship's values. For example, a hand of 3, 5, and 6 would be a ship score of 14. If you have 3 of a kind, however, that is called a fleet. A fleet of any value beats any ship score, but loses to a fleet of a higher value. For example, a fleet of all 1s would beat the ship's score of 14, but lose to a fleet of 3s. The winner of each hand takes the pot, and if there is a tie, then the pot is split between those who tied. Number 4. Roulette Quick, simple, and classic, this is just a D&D version of roulette. Every player bets an amount of their choice on a number 1 through 20. Then the DM rolls a d20, and if a chosen number comes up, everyone who bet on said number gets 4 times the amount they wagered. A player can place a bet on up to four separate numbers if they'd like, but they only win money based off the amount placed on the winning number. Note that most taverns and casinos would have a maximum and minimum bet amount for this game, like a minimum of 1 gold and a max of 10. And lastly, number 5, Drinks. You can't have a list of tavern games without a classic drinking competition. This game relies just as much on player stats as it does luck of the dice, and can either be a competition for money, who pays for the tab, or just for the hell of it. Everyone involved typically drinks the same beverage, either ale, shots, or something similar. After each round, everyone involved makes a constitution saving throw with a DC of 10 to resist getting drunk. At the end of each round, the DC increases by 1, so on round 5, the DC would be 14 and become 15 when moving on to round 6. After two failed saves, a player is out, as they're either passed out, too drunk to walk or talk, or throwing up the last several rounds of ale. Note that con-based builds usually dominate in this game. And that's it! 5 simple and fast tavern games to play in your D&D games. If you found this list helpful, please leave a like on the video, and let me know in the comments if you have any fun tavern games you like to run at your table. If you want more content like this, make sure to subscribe to the channel, and if you're interested in some good old 5th edition homebrew, check out this video where I go over my homebrew rules for ships and sailing in D&D. Yes, we play a lot of tavern games in my pirate-themed campaign. Anyway, thanks again, and I hope to see you in the next video. Happy drinking and gambling!
The Twisted Pine Tavern does not endorse underage or excessive drinking and gambling. Please make sure to follow local laws regarding drinking and gambling ages. Individuals of mixed race backgrounds, such as half elves, half orcs, and others, may be required to follow the laws regarding the race with the highest drinking or gambling age. The Twisted Pine Tavern is not responsible for any overpromised wagers, debt accrued as a result of gambling, or property loss as part of a wager, including but not limited to coin, valuables, magic items, property, or souls. Proper identification may be required prior to participating in these activities.